Hello YouTube, today we're going to be going over some practice problems, just some uh, microeconomics. Uh, this is kind of like towards the end of stuff when you're dealing with um, like marginal costs for a private market versus the marginal cost for society. Now, this deals with stuff like pollution um, and regulation and things like that. So we're just going to jump into some example problems here. So in this figure above, if the market is unregulated, the output will be what? So unregulated means it's left to the private. Um, market. So this marginal cost curve right here is for the private market and this is you would say I guess societies or the regulated. Let's put an R for regulated. So if unregulated which is the private uh, what will be the output? Output is the quantity down here so you just go where marginal benefit equals marginal cost and that's at this point here and that's at 250 units. So that's the answer here the figure above, if the market is unregulated, then at equilibrium uh, put level the marginal social cost of production. So that's the key, social cost. And here is the social cost. Um, and we're going to check that out. So we'll be looking at the marginal social cost and comparing it at the unregulated market. So notice how this uh, line is above the private marginal cost. Um, so it says, would it be less than the marginal benefit of consumers? Well, right here, um, that would actually not be true. The second one says, exceeds uh, the marginal benefit to consumers. Um, and that is true, actually, yeah, marginal, let's see. The marginal social cost production exceeds the marginal benefit for consumers. Because it's above, um, pretty much it's exceeding uh, the market there. So, same figure, in order to promote an efficient allocation of resources, the government should do what? Well, um, when you want to take a tax, and uh, or some sort of tax, and you're comparing these two lines here, these two parallel lines, all you got to do is you take the vertical distance uh, between the two points, so it can be here to here, there to there, it should all be the same, um, and if you notice, it's 50 minus, um, or 150 minus 50, which is a hundred, so that would be your tax. So simply like 150 minus 50 um, is an example, pretty much. So for a common resource source, the marginal social benefit of the resource is blank, the marginal private benefit. So let's uh, draw it out here. If you have this here as your graph, and let's say this is your the private marginal benefit and this is your margin, the society's marginal benefit. Um, if you just look at this, this kind of looks like monopolistic competition or monopoly, so you should have some prior knowledge of that. You should notice that this is actually uh, less than the private marginal uh, benefit here. So the social benefit is less than the private marginal benefit here. Um, so it's because of something called tragedy of the commons, so I'll just say it. Okay, next we got this table here. So let's look at this table. And uh, what we got to do is you simply, as hopefully you've been doing in all of this kind of like microeconomics, you learn, mostly talk about something called what's marginal or the change. Um, and that is what we're going to be dealing with here. So from 0 to 25, how much did we increase by? Is 25. From 25 to 45, we increased by 20. From 45 to 65, we increase by 20 as well. From 65 to 70, we have 5. So same thing here, 0 to 5 is 5, 5 to 15 is 10, 30 to 50 is 20. Um, so that is the marginal benefit and the marginal cost. Um, so now, real quick, I think I skipped one. This one would be 15, 15. 30 minus 15 is 15. So now the question becomes... Oh, we want to keep producing until marginal cost exceeds marginal benefit. So where would that be? Um, well, pretty much it should be, so right here is where we have um, pretty much our maximum here. And then if we produce the fourth ship, we're making way, uh, our, marginal, our marginal benefit is way less. Um, so you do not want to go to this fourth ship here. So you're probably going to stick with the third one um, and the costs as well. And look, I guess marginal benefit does equal, yeah, so that makes sense. So 
you should have um, it at three ships. You won't want to go any higher than that because it'll be kind of like overcrowding. So the answer would be three ships. And I realized that I skipped this one here. Um, so a school of tuna swimming in an ocean is what? Uh, this is kind of a definition question, um, but I'm going to kind of outline it here for you. I'll draw a t table. Okay, so here's a table. Um, if you have a rival good that's excludable, that means rival meaning like taking something away. You take something away as being rival, like someone else might not be able to get it. Non-rival means that everyone can experience the same thing. Um, and you're not, you can't physically take away something from someone else. Excludable versus non-excludable um, kind of means like you can prevent someone from getting access to it or you cannot. So excludable means are able to prevent from using and non-excludable means the opposite. So private good is something that you, is a rival good and it ex is excludable. So pretty much a lot of things are private good like clothes, shoes, anything pretty much you can purchase. Um, something that's rival Let's, um, we'll skip that for now. So something that's non-rival um, and non-excludable could be something like a clock tower. Everyone appreciates the clock tower and admires it. It's useful for telling time. And it also, some you can't take away how someone perceives its beauty or something if it's a really cool clock tower. Um, so that would be um, a public good. And collective is something that everyone has equal access to, but it's also excludable. So something like pay-per-view, maybe even Netflix, um, could fall into that category as well. And finally, we have rival and non-excludable, which is a common good, and that would be something like fish. So that's kind of what we're going to get at here. So it's pretty much a school of fish swimming in the ocean. It's rival because if I fish and I take away a fish, that means someone else won't be able to catch that fish, but it's non-excludable because people have access to it. Um, equal access. So it's non excludable and rival is the answer. Okay, now we'll move on here. So we have, um, sorry, we have Hickory, Dickory, and Doc are the only inhabitants of this small island, Talk, and they are distressed because they have no way to tell time. Um, they can buy a clock tower from the neighboring island, which will allow them to tell time, but each willingness for each person to pay is pretty much. Eight thousand seven hundred, four thousand seven hundred, or seven thousand dollars. What's the maximum they're willing to pay, and why? So pretty much, if to do this problem, you just say, okay, what's the maximum that they should be willing to pay? If they combine together, the maximum the amount that they'll pay um, is simply you um, add up the cost of each one. So this is Hickory's costs willing to pay. Dickory is willing to pay four thousand seven hundred, and Doc is willing to pay seven thousand um, dollars. You add all that up, it should be, if I'm not mistaken, twenty-four. Yeah, two thousand four. Excuse me, twenty thousand four hundred dollars. Um, so, this would be the maximum they'd want to pay combined. Now, why? I guess it's it's a public good, and I guess is the answer. Um, so again, going back to the chart here, public good, it's non-rival, non-excludable, um, so th th this way that they're measuring it. Okay, so now if the clock costs $2,000, should they buy it? Why or why not? Well, yes, because um, they are, their maximum, their amount of pay their maximum is two twenty thousand four hundred dollars, and they just pretty much got four hundred dollars off. Um, so since this is greater than what they originally were going to pay, so it's like saying I'm gonna I'm willing to pay fifty bucks for something, and then they sell it to me for forty five. I've got five bucks off. I'm happy. So definitely gonna want to buy it um, because they the maximum that they're willing to pay um, is greater than what they're getting it sold for. So. If they decide to split the cost equally, so what we'd want to do is we would take that total cost here, or that maximum cost that they'd want to pay, and we divide it by three. Should be approximately, I'm just going to round it to 7,000 for each person. Um, would they pay for it? Why or why not? Well, this is their individual up here that they're willing to pay. So this is above 7,000, this is 7,000, but notice how um, Dickory here. He doesn't want to pay any more than $4,700. Therefore, they would not buy the clock um, because Dickory would not pay it. So no, Dickory wouldn't pay. Dickory wouldn't pay. Because um, his, his marginal willingness is that $4,700, and he will not pay anywhere near $7,000. So that pretty much covers that.
Um, hope it helps in terms of just some extra practice problems. Um, and good luck studying for your either exam or just understanding knowledge of uh, microeconomics.